Now, IAG's deal with Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway surprised everyone this week and put the insurance industry firmly back in the spotlight. Part of IAG's rationale for the deal was to remove much of the volatility in its business, something all insurance companies try to do. But with a spate of extreme weather events coupled with tougher times for investments and the threat of new players, opinions are deeply divided on the outlook for the industry. Andrew Robertson has been investigating. I'm 84 years old and this is uh, my first investment uh, in an Australian co company. I mean, I've been very derelict, but, but it's been worth waiting for. IAG uh, shareholders have the welcomed the Oracle of Omaha uh, with open arms, into, uh, but underneath the kudos that comes with the world's most famous investor is a stark reality. Raising premium prices in the current competitive climate is getting much harder. Because premium rates aren't increasing, then there's no top line or revenue growth. So what the companies have to do is try and work out how to increase their insurance margin when premium rates aren't increasing. For IAG, increasing that insurance margin will come in the form of an income stream from Berkshire Hathaway in return for selling some of its business. In Australia and New Zealand, it's a pretty mature market for personal insurance and, and part of the business insurance as well. So that's one of the reasons why our IAG is, is attempting to expand across Asia, albeit from a very low base. According to research house Ibis World, general insurance is a $60 billion a year industry, which in the last five years has grown at less than 1% a year. However, Ibis World is predicting much stronger annual growth of 4% over the next five years. General growth in the population, um, growth in the number of new dwellings, um, new uh, new assets such as automobiles um, is all going to drive you know, general growth in the industry. The three biggest insurers are IAG with 21% of the market, followed by Suncorp with 17% and then QBE with 11 In an environment where fee growth is limited, efficiency is becoming a key thing. There's a massive focus on reducing costs and this is not something that's just happened in the last six months. Insurers earn a large part of their income from their investments, mainly in high-quality government and corporate bonds. The now almost certain increase in US interest rates in coming months will boost those returns, but as always with insurers, one of the biggest risks they face is from the weather. Hailstorms in Brisbane, a tropical cyclone in central Queensland and then floods and hail in Sydney, all within the last six months. A trail of wreckage for home, building and vehicle owners and a $2 billion bill for the insurance industry. It is impossible to predict how much each of them will cost. All we know is that they are, are likely to be, on average, a material cost. The severity of the recent weather events has forced IAG to lower its guidance on insurance margins for this year. The claims costs seem to get more expensive as time uh, goes, goes on. So. It's a big issue for the insurers and that's one of the reasons why they have um, quite extensive reinsurance arrangements. Uh, Leanne's insurance, that's right, how can I help? Another challenge for the big players is the determination of companies like German giant Allianz to grab a larger share of the Australian market. Helped by a series of catchy television commercials, Allianz's premium income has jumped by more than a third in just five years. And then there's the rise of the online aggregators using the internet to disrupt the traditional insurance market. Consumers don't tend to have a particular affiliation to any certain bank or insurance provider. Um, they view it as more of a transactional activity. Activity that's chipping away at the dominance of the big insurers.